I want to predict this line. Best fit line. Whenever we have to minimize something, do you remember in maths what do we do? It is not like there are actual neurons. In the end, it is all maths. It's just numbers. Now I want you to take the pen and explain me. Oh <laughs> neural God. networks. Hello, Papa. Hello, Kirti. Today we'll be studying neural networks. Oh my God. Okay. So I'll start with some very basic thing, very simple thing, and sure. then we'll build on. Okay. Sure. sure. Uh, do you remember equation of line that you learned in school or college? Definitely. Y is equal to mx plus c. Very good. Okay, so y equal to mx plus c. mx plus c. What was m? What was c? m is the slope. c was the constant. Very good. So m is the slope, which is like tan theta. Yeah, yeah. And c is the constant. Constant. Constant meaning this y. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Correct. Definitely. So here there are basically two things. One is multiplication, and then you add some constant over yeah, it. Yeah. Correct. Very simple yeah, stuff. Definitely. Right. So now that you know the equation of line, let's do something a bit differently. Okay. Okay. So in ML, what do we do? We train our models. We have a lot of data, and yeah. we train our models. Correct. So now imagine that I have a lot of values of x and y. That for this x value, this is the y value. For this x value, this is the y value. Multiple values. Correct. And I have the data like this. Okay. Okay. I have a lot of data. There will be some data that will be very far, but something like this. Definitely. Okay. Now I want to predict this line. Best fit line. Best fit line. Exactly. Okay. okay. Now it can also be like this. It can also be like this. Definitely. Can also be like this. Definitely. So we have to find the best fit line. Okay. And once we have the best fit line, after that, if I get any new value of x, I will be able to predict. The y value. Oh, yeah, definitely. That is correct. Yeah. So this is like understanding a pattern from the data that I already have, so that for a new data I will be able to predict that what will Basically be the Basically building up patterns and then predicting the data. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Sounds simple. Very simple stuff. So okay. far so good. So far so good. Before we move ahead, I would like to ask you if you know that in our Educosis Genii course, I didn't just cover the application side, but I also covered the basics of Genii. So neural networks, RNNs, LSTMs, we literally wrote the transformer code, went through the white paper, went through the deep seek white paper. We have done so much. You have to check out the testimonials. Plus, if you're preparing for interviews, then I have courses on DSA, LLD, HLD. We have courses on C++. There is so much. You have to check out the testimonials at least. Even the LinkedIn profiles of all our testimonials are added over there for credibility, right? So you should know that if you like my teaching style, I love teaching over there. We are building a great community and so many people are already part of it. At least check out the details in the description. So, how do I even get started with, you know, predicting the line? That is the first thing and then we will build up. Okay. Okay. So, currently I do not know the value of M and C. Yeah. Right? So, what if I start with some random value of M and C? It might be like completely different, completely so far zero, off. zero, M, one, or anything, something. Anything. 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 Yeah. Correct? So, I will start with some random values mm. and then suppose, okay. So, for a particular X value, if I know the y value okay? okay so this is the actual value this is actual value correct yes, yes. now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some random values of m and c and i'm going to find the corresponding y value that i can calculate with this random value right now okay okay, okay. so that i'm going to call y predicted predicted value yeah okay okay so now this Predicted value will obviously be different than the true value because we definitely. started with like random values definitely. of M and C, definitely. right? Definitely. So I can find that how different is this predicted value from the actual what value. What are the variance between the two? Correct. Okay. So how are they different? Sure. Right? What is the error between them? Error between. Or what is the loss between the actual Y value and the predicted Y value? Understood? Yeah. So now I have a Y value, which is the actual value, and I have the Y predicted value. Correct? Okay, okay. So I have to find how different are these two. Basically, I have to calculate the loss between them. Okay. And I can use different loss functions to calculate how different are these values. Okay. Now there can be many ways. Like I can just take y minus y hat. Yeah. Right? I can take square of that to make sure it is not negative. Okay. Just trying to understand how different are they. Right? Okay. And our goal will be what? Our goal will be to minimize, to minimize this. this. Definitely. Correct? Yeah. So if I call this L, then my goal is to minimize this L. L. As yeah? closer as zero. Exactly. Okay. So this this particular formula is called mean squared error. Yeah. Uh, because I'm taking like squaring the error, right? Yeah. So this is fine, right? 
Now my goal is to minimize the loss. Okay. Whenever we have to minimize something, do you remember in maths what do we do? Differentiation. Very good. Very good. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now what are the two uh, variables that I have? M and C. M and C. And what do I want to minimize? L. Very good. You are awesome. Okay. So I can calculate D L by D N. D N and D L by, by D C. Yes. Awesome. This is called gradients. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, from calculating this gradients, we will understand how to change our M and C values okay. so that we are able to find the correct M and C values so that we are able to find the best Which fit we of the line. Assumed. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. This much is completely clear. 100%. Now, let me just quickly clean this and then we'll move on to the next sure. step. So far, we understood that we have the values of X and Y. We are going to calculate predicted value of Y. We are going to find loss, which will be some difference between y and y period, the yes. actual value or of the, the predicted of value, it. or the square of it. There can be many different ways of calculating okay. the loss. Yeah. Then we are going to find the gradients. Gradients. DL by DN, uh, DM yeah. or DL by DC. Okay. Okay. Now this is the basics. Okay. Okay. Now let's come to neural networks. From the name, what do you think neural networks? What does it mean? What I know about neural networks is something to do with the brains. Hmm. I do not know what it means in your machine learning or AI or other things. Great. But uh, I only know about that is some, uh, what you call, word which is used in uh, some part of the brain. Very good. So the goal over here is to make the machine act like humans. To mimic the human brain. Okay. Right? So it is so, derived from there. Yes. So it is not like there are actual neurons, right? Because neurons are yeah, in our definitely. human brain. Definitely. But the concept is inspired from that. We are okay. just trying to mimic how human brain thinks. Okay. But in reality, obviously, there are no real neurons. In the end, it is all maths. It's just numbers. It's basically what we just discussed. Okay. It. This is it. This is the basics. Okay? okay. So let's try to understand neural networks now. Sure. Please. It looks fancy, but in the end, it is just this. Okay. Okay. So what happens is that there are different neurons. These are just neurons. And just now, like we had one input, they can be multiple, multiple inputs. inputs. So we can have multiple inputs over here. Okay. So there will be like X1, X2, X2 X3, X4, X5. X. Right. So currently we had Y equal to MX plus C. Now we are going to have Y equal to x1 into something so i'm going to call it w1 plus x2 w2 plus x3 w3 and so on depending on the number of the inputs okay. plus some constant instead of c i'm going to call it b okay, okay? so it's just variable name right instead of m sure. i'm calling not, it not w1 issue, w2. right but you can also think of it like this see this w1 w2 w3 these are called weights yeah and it is that how important each of these inputs are. Basically, weighted average concept. Very, very good. Oh my God! Wow! So okay. it is like if this x, this input is more important, the weight will be weight more. Weight will be more. Definitely. Right? Absolutely. Okay. So this is your input layer, and you're going to get some output values from over here. Okay. Okay. So this will be your output layer. Okay. And this is your input, input layer. layer. Now, in between, there can be many hidden layers. I have just drawn one hidden one, layer, yeah. but there can be many hidden layers. Okay. Okay? okay. So, what is going to happen is each connection is going to have a weight, like W2, W3, W4, W5. And this is all from this to this neuron, right? Okay. So, so let's say this is like 1, 1, 1, 1. Similarly, for this neuron, there will be like more connections. 1, like 1, this. 2, 1, 3, 1. Yes, 3, okay. 1, like this, right? Okay. So there will be more connections like Multiple, this. Multiple, yeah. So it looks very fancy, but in the end, this is what is happening. Okay. Understood? Okay. So what will be the output from here? It will be y equal to x1 plus into this weight, w1 x2 w1. into this weight, yeah, yeah. x3 into this weight, and so on. Okay. Like this, every neuron is going to calculate. Definitely. Now let me rub this, and for simplification, I'm just going to take one neuron in one hidden layer, and let me draw it again. Okay. Sounds good? Sure. So we have various inputs. Inputs. x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. In reality, obviously, there will be more hidden layers and more neurons. So I'm just taking one. For convenience, exactly. Yes. One. And let's take one output, one output. currently. Okay. okay? So this is suppose W1, W2, W2 W3, W3, W4, W5. Okay. And this Y value is going to be just X1, W1 plus X2, 
W2 plus so X3 so W3, okay. right? And so on plus some bias value. Bias. This is like some constant. Some I'm calling constant. it bias. Okay, okay. okay. Now because of this, you know that how it was like why like this is the yeah, intercept, yeah. right? Intercept. So it makes sure that you your line doesn't pass through the origin. Origin. Correct. Now this is y equal to something. Okay. Now in reality, we have taken a very simplistic uh, linear flow over here, right? But do you think in reality your patterns it are going not to be so simple. right? Yeah, your patterns yeah. are not going to be simple, yeah, like yeah, your yeah. stock prices, your yeah, anything, weather. Yeah. It's not going to be linear, right? Neither our brain works so simply. Right. <laughs> so you have to have some complexity over there, okay. right? Non-linearity. Okay. So this entire thing. is usually multiplied by some function this is called activation functions okay just to eliminate so the simplicity yes to add some non linearity or to build in non linearity correct okay so this is the basic of neural networks okay okay now let me tell you about a theorem called universal approximate theorem okay, okay. it says that if you have enough neurons okay if you have enough hidden layers theoretically okay any problem that you can think of in this entire world no matter how complicated it is no matter how complicated the pattern is neural networks can what approximate what is the theorem you said universal approximate theorem universal approximate theorem okay. so universally it can be any pattern in the whole world your neural networks are capable of learning them oh great right so right now we have taken the example of simple linear equation but it can be any complicated thing any complicated. so and the basics is as simple as that you are going to take any random values of these the weights okay. and any random value of the bias you are going to calculate the predicted value and then you are going to have the actual y value you are going to calculate the loss, loss. and you are going to try to minimize the loss so you will basically find dl by gradients yes gradients so because there are multiple weights multiple biases usually matrices are used to represent these weights and biases okay, okay. so this is the concept okay sounds good 100% Okay now that you have understood everything now i want you to take the pen and explain me <laughs> neural networks okay from the beginning just explain the basics like if i have a lot of values of inputs and i have y then i have to learn to understand the pattern and for new you, values of x you want me to start with the line concept and all no oh. no just the basics like basics. if i have inputs i have outputs see if i have multiple inputs sorry huh. if i have multiple inputs huh. and assuming that there is only one neuron hmm huh. and there will be one output hmm huh. so th this is Come on this yeah there is a linkage with each uh, input and we are assigning some weightages w1 w2 so initially w3. what weight values do you get w4. started with what weight values like what will be the values of this Oh, sorry, you didn't uh, cover this. I said no. We'll start with any random values. Okay, any random values. You said no M N C any random values. Okay, okay. Hmm. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were asking specific values. Random values. And there there will be an output. Hmm. So the equation will be hmm. W is equal to W one X one hmm. plus W two X two and so on and so and so forth. Plus no. plus some bias. What will this bias help in? Bias is helping that it doesn't uh, pass through the origin. Origin, yeah. Hmm. And uh, then. And then to uh, as you said, the, the problems are not so simple. Hmm. And uh, you named some uh, universal uh, approximate theorem. Theorem, universal expert. Uh, and you said that no matter how many variables are there, and neural networks are capable of solving, understanding, and solving the problem. Yes, of understanding the pattern. Understanding the pattern. Huh. And now to build in the complexity, huh. uh, basically we can. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting it here. Activation function. Act activation function. Add some activation function here. So you're going to multiply this by a function. Like yeah. you're going to apply a function on it. Yeah, and this is called activation function. Correct. Anything else I'm missing out? And then of course I'll be. Uh, Calculating the gradients. Right, and how will you get the loss? Loss is basically to, to minimize the. Uh, no, how? What is loss? Loss is equal to the true value minus the predicted value. 
Very and good. this could be uh, next pair or any other right. function. Yeah. Very good. Anything else? Yeah. This is it. So this is what neural networks is, and this is the basics of entire deep learning. So everything internally is neural networks. But you scared me initially. That neural it is networks. going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> but it is actually this. So this is the basics. If you understand this, this is uh, this was simple. So you are fine. now ready to understand how ChatGPT works internally. Okay. 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 We'll do that also. What sure. Sure. All nice. Great. I Thank hope you. you guys are liking this series. And if you are liking this series, do go share and subscribe Kirti Paswani's videos. Bhai ne bola karne ka, to karne ka. Good job. I think I'm a good teacher. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>